Welcome back to FT Markets. The Greece crisis is escalating, but the contagion effects, the impact on other financial markets, have been contained. For how long? With me to discuss the impact of Greece on European bonds and equity markets is Eric Nielsen, who's the Global Chief Economist at Unicredit. Eric, welcome back to the Financial Times. What's been remarkable about the Greek crisis is actually the muted reaction on Eurozone bond markets. We could have looked at lots of things. Uh, we come back later to Italian, um, Spanish, Portuguese debt markets. But let's just start with the German Bund. Uh, you would have expected times of crisis that would be a rush for Bunds. The yields would go down, the safe haven. But actually what we've seen right at the end of that chart is relatively modest, nothing like the, the falls we saw when ECB launched QE earlier this year. Are you surprised? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. If you had asked me Sunday night, I would have thought it would be more dramatic. As you see, there's just a little bit of a drop here. There's a little bit of, of, of flight to safety, but nothing how, dramatic. How do you explain that sort of modest reaction then? I, th I think people realize this is a political crisis more than it's an economic or financial crisis, really. And it's um, also, I suppose, crucially being contained by, mentioned QE, the ECB. Yeah, exactly. But that probably hits more the peripheral or supports the peripheral debt, right? Yeah. Uh, OK, well, let's look at our second chart, which is showing precisely that, showing the yields on peripheral right. bonds, Portuguese, Italy, Spain, which have gone up uh, noticeably, but again, not as much as you would have expected. No, exactly. So this is that little bleep we see here. And again, if you had asked me when I heard the outcome of the referendum, I would have thought it would have been somewhat more. But at the end of the day, and I've talked to investors around the world, uh, people notice that in Italy and in, in Spain particularly, the governments are giving a lot of money back. The redemptions and the, and the coupons over the rest of this year are phenomenal. 75 billion in Italy, 23 in, in, uh, in Spain. And plus you have the QE, right? They are mopping up. ECB buying. The ECB buying. They're buying about equivalent to half the, the uh, gross issuance in Italy and about uh, one third or, no, sorry, two thirds of, in Spain. Um, of course, the question would be if... Uh, the Greece crisis got even worse if Grexit, Greek exit became a, a real possibility, well, so there's a real possibility it actually happened, um, would you expect the, or can the ECB do more? Yeah, they can do more and they will do more if, if, it, if it happens. I do think that the ECB has a high tolerance for volatility. Uh, I don't think you would see them step in just because you saw another 50 basis point or thereabout, but they could front load the QE a little bit. And of course, you have the OMT. Uh, I mean, an interesting point, of course, is that uh, although yields have not gone up massively, we have seen yields going up. And that's not what you would have uh, hoped for if you were launching QE. What the ECB intended was to push down interest rates. I and mean, we've put QE effects fade as our headline here. Um, yeah. that, that they could argue that they do need to be more aggressive to bring those yields back down again. Yeah, I think I'm not sure I, I, worried, I would worry so much. First of all, this is the, the unnatural levels in many ways. And this pig up here came along with the bond yield. Spreads didn't really widen in this period. And it was reflected that European economy was doing rather well. So they were quite pleased with this. And the real issue with the QE was to weaken the currency. And that helped. Right? OK, let's look at our final chart, just showing um, this is the measure of inflation expectations, what markets expect inflation to average over five years, starting in five years' time. We've seen a pickup, but again, isn't that an excuse for the ECB to be more aggressive? It's not, not even where it was a year ago. I don't think the ECB is very worried anymore. This is a beautiful trend from their point of view. They come in with the QE. They got managed to weaken the exchange rate, obviously, from before when they started to, to notice that it was going to come. And therefore, people start to expect now that inflation will start to move back towards the, the long run trend. But whether the market price is 1.8, 1.85 or 2, if I were Draghi, I wouldn't worry that much. Uh, you're sort of speaking as if, almost as if um, investors in European assets, are obviously other than Greek assets, don't have to think about Greece even, don't have to worry about it particularly, what happens. I think that's right. I mean, to be honest, uh, all our corporate clients tell us what they worry about today is China, not about Greece. Greece is not something they see disrupt the recovery in Europe. It is, it, it's sort of a political issue. It's not an economic one. That's a very interesting question. Perhaps to, to end on, uh, the ECB seems to be in control of uh, Eurozone government bond markets. Do you think the Chinese authorities are as in control of the uh, Chinese situation? Which would you fear most, ECB in Greece or China and uh, the Chinese equities? I fear, I fear China many times over what I fear of, of Europe. I mean, it, it's, things are not too bad here. They have under control their political issues. But in terms of the recovery, the underlying policy framework, I take Europe any time over China. 
Eric, thank you very much. So, worries about China there, but Greece in that context, not such a problem for European markets.